Hi, Delisha. Hey, how's it going? Very well, very well. Well, under the circumstances where I guess we, we can't complain, we're healthy, so we have to be grateful, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I saw something just yesterday, the governor here in Colorado, um, he's been talking a lot about the federal response. And one thing that I thought was really great that he's doing is pulling in local businesses to help begin to manufacture some of the things that like our healthcare workers need. Um, but at this point, all of our schools are on homeschool status. And um, like the district that my children would be attending school in, um, just came off of spring break. So here in our community, a lot of people are just beginning their homes, homeschool journey today or this yeah. week. We had a lockdown on Friday for schools. Schools shut down officially last Friday, which means that today is the first full day that kids in Britain are home with their parents. So I thought it would be useful to get on a call with somebody who has an extensive amount of experience like yourself in homeschooling to just basically share a few useful tips for the community. I mean, at this time, if anyone has any useful information that will help everyone, I think it's, it's worth sharing. So I thought I, I would connect with you um, and just see if I can pick your brains a bit for the community and see if someone might benefit from your experience uh, about how to basically get through this time of enforced homeschooling. So yeah, that's pretty much what, what we're going to be talking about. So uh, let's get to the introductions. Yes, uh, my name is Delijah. I am the younger sister of the amazing Yolanda, um, which is awesome, by the way. I got to ride those coattails for a long time. Um, but I'm married, we have five kiddos, and four of them are actively homeschooled. Um, Although I have a sixth grader, a third grader, and a kindergartner, I consider my preschooler also being homeschooled because he has a pretty structured day as well. And then we also have a two-year-old who is, um, I don't know, I think everything is homeschooling. So generally we never say we're only homeschooling four, we're homeschooling all five of the kids and that's mm -hmm. um, the plan the plan for all of them. So it's very exciting. We've been doing this now for three years. So I'm not an expert and I'm not perfect, but I have learned a lot from the very first time that I, you know, went on this adventure with my family. So I'm hoping to teach you guys some things that I went through, you know, learn from my mistakes so that you can have a fighting chance since, yeah. I mean, I chose to do this, but I'm so sorry <laughs> for everyone that's <laughs> not having that choice because it's not an easy task. What's the age range of the, the four kids? What, how, how old is the oldest and how old is the youngest? Sure, the oldest is 12. He'll be 13 at the end of this. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Um, but he'll be 13 at the end of this year. And then I have a nine-year-old, a five-year-old, and a six-year-old as well that are all homeschooling. So that is my range right now that I can kind of give you feedback on. As uh, an experienced homeschooling mom, um, what would be your top five tips for people who are having to do this for the first time um, and they want to just they want to make this work obviously so what, what will be your five top tips so i i wrote some things down and i tried to say oh this is the most important thing but honestly the most important thing is going to be different for everyone because you have to know yourself and you have to know your kids so when I first started out, I had just had um, a baby and I was thinking, I've had other kids, like this is going to take just a couple of weeks and I'm going to be able to jump right into homeschooling the kids right away. And that was not the case. Um, and with the new baby and the fluctuation that I had in my schedule with that, which for you guys, I'm going to liken to having a full-time job, you know, the job the baby had needs that were very specific to her that couldn't be delayed and 
I needed better structure for my homeschool day so that I could be successful with the kids. And I am notoriously, this is why I say you have to know yourself, I'm notoriously a very relaxed uh, time is relative for me uh, uh -huh. in a lot of ways. So I have not always been the best scheduler. Even now, I find that I have a schedule that flexes with the needs of the day, which can be useful, but it can also be a trap. So I would say that for someone like me, where maybe you don't love working from a strict schedule, that's going to be one of the first things that you have to address. You're going to need to know what time are you getting the kids up? And yeah, your kids were going to school before, but when they're not going to school, it's easy to fluctuate out of that structure, right? So what time are your kids getting up? Um, what is your time frame? Is it that first hour, first two hours after they get up that you're allowing them, you know, get ready for the day, do your morning chores, eat food before we get ready for school? Um, when are you trying to start your school day? And then from there, what is your school day going to look like? A mistake that a lot of people make is it's, it's going to be one extreme or the other. You're cramming too much in and you maybe are maintaining an expectation that your kids are going to be able to handle like seven hours of schoolwork, right? <laughs> no, yeah. they're not. Okay. They're not going to be able to do that. They're not even going to want to do that, okay? Um, or not scheduling enough and leaving the time blocks far too wide. Um, one thing that I found is really helpful for me is if things have gotten way off track, maybe being able to look at the schedule or look at the clock and say, this is what we're supposed to be doing right now so that I can get everyone recentered back on their task. Um, but part of scheduling is the transition time. Can you hear them in the background? Yeah, we can hear them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> part of the scheduling is going to be um, your transition time. My kids require transition time. If I have them on, you know, right now you guys get a little free time, build blocks or whatever. I made the mistake of going in my schedule and I'd say, okay, at 11 o'clock, we're going to be back on schoolwork. And I'd say, okay, guys, it's 11 o'clock, time to get back on schoolwork. Well, they'd go rushing off to do schoolwork and they've destroyed this part of my house. So transition time is that, that block where you're telling them, hey, you guys, in 10 minutes or in 15 minutes, this is what we're going to do so that you can wean them off of whatever they were involved in. You know, do you have them doing reading work? Do you have them um, working on math? Whatever that looks like, I need you to start wrapping this up because in 10 minutes, we're gonna do this. In five minutes, we're gonna do this. And I learned for myself, I had to build that into my schedule. So those, your schedule is gonna matter and it, it looks different for everyone. Um, here at our house, we do our education block from about 10 a.m. to around 3 p.m. And that also includes our time for lunch. But okay. my, kids, my kids can go pretty firm, but I give them schoolwork for about 45 minutes and then 15 minute break. <laughs> 45 minutes, 15 minute break. Um, the smaller kids, they might work for 30 minutes and then I give them a 30 minute break. And then we'll come back and we'll switch will switch activities. But all of this just to say there's a lot of ways to schedule your day. Just schedule your day so that you and the kids both know what you're supposed to be doing, what they're supposed to be doing, and you can keep them on track. You're going to manage your time most effectively if you know what your time is supposed to be doing. <laughs> right? Okay. So I've picked up two things, uh, two key points there. So the first thing is to basically be self-aware to know yourself and know what your personal style is, because that then translates into how you then structure your day, which is the second point, is to provide some some, some way of structuring the, the program for the day, okay? One of the things that I put in my list is managing expectations. So your paradigm and what you're coming from 
with working a full day and maybe you have you know you take a break at this time of day you take your lunch at this time of day but you as an adult can work for you know three hours straight maybe you work straight through your lunch time sometimes um that's going to be really tough <laughs> if you take that paradigm and you try to transition it to your kids so you want to recognize and know that their frame of reference is different than yours and you have to be acutely aware of that okay um, and personality type and communication style so if you're wonderful you have a great schedule you you're the sweetest most loving person like myself and you have a kid like my nine-year-old who is very inquisitive and needs her information delivered to her in a very specific way i can't tell you how many times she's been crying i've been crying like we just we can't bring it together and for some reason we just are butting heads so you want to know how you communicate how does your kid communicate and try to meet in the middle because the moment that it turns into the crying phase no learning is happening like you've <laughs> you've lost that opportunity for education in that moment so you have to know yourself you absolutely have to know yourself and to the best of your ability know your kid you know and maybe ask questions about what they like, what works.